everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Bill Eddy here today, and we were talking how, about his book, Calming Upset People with Ear, um, Emotion, Attention, and Respect. How statements showing empathy, attention, or respect can quickly diffuse a conflict. So welcome. Thank you so much, CJ. Glad to be back. Yeah, so I, I want to talk a little bit. So about I, I noticed that on your website that it's it, you you talk about people who are high conflict and um, I was wondering if you could talk briefly about people who like conflict and and why they like conflict yeah it's interesting um, but the characteristics of high conflict people are primarily they like to blame other people they have all or nothing thinking um, extreme emotions, extreme behavior. And so they're kind of geared all the time to fixating on somebody else. It's all your fault. Mm. And so they want to get upset and it's not that hard to, to do. In fact, it's hard for them not to kind of unload their mm. anger or hurt or emotions mm. Mm. onto other people. And I think, I think partly it, it comes from like personality development, which is partly genetic and partly early childhood and partly the culture the person's in. So maybe they got some genetic tendencies towards high conflict. They're just born to be a fighter and they're just going to look for someone to fight with. Mm. Um, or maybe early childhood, maybe they were abused as kids and they feel like everyone's picking on them and so they've got to fight back even when it isn't really a fight back situation mm. Mm. or they grow up in a culture where the family or communities yells at each other a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um i i am um, was at starbucks today and and having my you know favorite moment of like you know holiday joy it's beautiful there because it's really beautifully decorated and um i i'm not getting paid by starbucks to say this but i did see <laughs> at the at the coffee line um i was just sitting there and this woman grabbed her coffee and the guy was trying to explain why he had made the coffee the way that she didn't like or whatever and uh she said she started grabbing a coffee and he's like, well, and she's like, I don't even want to hear your excuses. And she, and then she like stomped off. <laughs> she grabbed her coffee. She was stomping off. She went back and she's like, really, I don't want to hear them. And I thought, well, if you didn't, why are you, <laughs> are you stomping back? Hey. And then she went to sit at her seat and I thought, this is very curious, non holiday spirit behavior. <laughs> Um, so it sounds like this is the kind of person like they, is this right? Is this an accurate depiction? And, and Or who are the people who showed, because you were a judge before, who are the people that showed up in court? Could you kind of spot them a mile away? Um, it, it really depends. Sometimes you don't spot them until something gets blurted out, like attacking you, mm. um, like that, like that example. And sometimes you can just tell, is this angry look, they're ready to fight. And so, yeah, and the reality is you can use ear statements at any time. It doesn't just have to be a high conflict person. Maybe somebody's upset, someone's sad, someone's angry in the moment legitimately about something. Mm. So you can use ear statements in all of these situations. But mm. high conflict people who have that pattern I described um, get into conflicts a lot and they tend to escalate them and this is one way to help calm them down again mm. so i i had a meeting i told you that i must have been pre um, life was preparing me for this meeting so um, i had a meeting with my two work associates and i think that um, probably tension has been building and building and um it unleashed on all three of us at the same time mm -hmm. so um um and it's interesting because you mentioned culture childhood and um you know what you were raised with and so my background is asian and so i'm generally like pretty compliant generally speaking like we're at least the way i was raised as an asian woman 
first of all, women are generally considered, you know, submissive to men. So that's kind of one thing that already makes me somewhat compromised when it comes to conflict. Um, the second thing is um, the culture is more towards geared towards authority and authority is always right. So generally, if someone is right, your boss is always right and you're always wrong. Um, and then um, I also came from a family experience where my mom would like explode out with these kind of explosive arguments and and my parents would have these explosive arguments. And so I never really learned, frankly, how to be calm. Like if, mm -hmm. and, and even when I go back to my family, I have to revert to that, even though I have other techniques because that's how they speak to each other. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> this is how they communicate. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so early childhood was so that I'm in this meeting and I'm getting pissed off, but it's like a seething kind of like, well, you know, so the, the, the context was we want, all want to be, our voices want to be included. And this is like a perfect context for a modern day society. So I won't go up through all the details, but there's me, I'm Asian, uh, my business partner who um, is um, African-American, actually Jamaican. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have um, a, a another business partner who is like in her 70s. So we all have, we have age differences, 70, 40, 58. Mm -hmm. We have different races and genders. We all want to be included in what we're expressing in our PowerPoints. Yeah. And each of us has like hurt feelings with respect to um, why we feel like we haven't been heard, um, slights made by other people and just general frustration and different ways of emotionally handling it based on our, um, our, our childhood upbringing. So this all came to accumulation where it was literally at one point, it was an hour, one hour of mm -hmm. um, accusations, anger, hurt feelings, um, yelling, um, talking over each other, and um, each of us having a different w role that we play. So mine is kind of a seething kind of like, hey, that's not right. Here's basically what happens because I was tr with my parents when they got that way, I had to be the peacemaker. Oh. So I would be the rational one who would like listen, methodically lay out problems and get to a resolution. But at a compromise of really emoting what I was feeling. And then there is, um, my partner who describes her MO in the past as being an angry black woman, you know, and then my other partner who, so we have this whole collusion of these three things. So how could we avoid? And so what I end up doing inadvertently not wanting to is I catch people's strong emotions. So I'm, because I'm a coach, I usually work with clients and I can hold their strong emotions because I'm working with something that doesn't involve me at all. Mm. In this case, it's something that involves me. And so I'm catching it and feeling it and catching. So how do you not catch other people's strong emotions? I think you have to consciously practice this mm -hmm. and be consciously aware. So if we start with catching emotions and know there's, there's some involuntary and voluntary parts to that. Mm -hmm. So our brain just starts in many ways to just absorb and mirror the emotions that come at us, but we can also have a choice and go, wait a minute, I'm not going to absorb that emotion. Um, and so you, you can kind of redirect yourself mm -hmm. um, from absorbing that, consciously telling yourself things. I mean, I deal with conflict a lot, and so I have phrases that I use just for myself, like, remember, Bill, it's not about you. And that's mm. kind of like you're saying in other settings mm -hmm. when it's not really about you. Um, but when it is about you, it's a little bit harder. Um, but that's, that's okay. Let, let's get real, Bill. Let's talk about you and your wife, like <laughs> what, <laughs> or, uh, her partner. What happens when when someone that you love, right? It's a little bit different. I mean, I know as a third party mediator or judge, like it's not about me. So I don't really get caught up in the whole story because it's, I know that there's two sides, blah, blah, blah. 
But yeah. what happens when you personally have someone that you love or care for who's having an explosive emotion? How, how, what would you do at that point? There's, there's like an automatic negative response. And then it's like, oh, wait, wait, <laughs> I gotta, gotta do an ear statement if I can. Okay. So I'll try to say, oh, you know, I, I, I can see how frustrating this is. Let's talk about it. You know, I want to understand. Um, but the closer you are, the longer it takes before you make that shift. Uh, yeah, so, of, of course, because usually it's like, well, I know you're thinking that, but let me actually, so it's like, I know you're thinking that, but let me actually spend the next three minutes justifying my position and why you're wrong. <laughs> That's <right>. basically <laughs> what happens. Well, what's funny is teaching this stuff is, is occasionally I do catch myself. It's, you know, my wife and I, we get along pretty easily, but I'll be like giving a presentation and someone will say, Bill, that'll never work. And I'll go, what do you mean it'll never work? And then I go, oh, yeah, I can appreciate your, con your concern. Uh, and I like have to switch. And every once in a while, it's a couple minutes later and I'm defending myself and justifying. And then I go, Oh, I could have just done an ear statement right there. So, so, it's, so you have to catch yourself before you go. Ah, here's another reason I'll justify myself. So before wait. you're like those words get spilled out of your mouth, you yeah. say, oh, that's wait. Say again what you would say. You'd say that's a, what would you say? Um, I hear you or. Or I hear you. Yeah, I want to understand. Tell me more. Things like that. Okay. Um, and the thing is. And this has happened where I'm presenting stuff and someone challenges me on it. And I, what I've learned is I need to say, you know, I had that concern too, you know? And then I realized it does work or hmm. whatever. And so if I can kind of connect with, yeah, I've been there too, or I've had that concern too, then it diffuses right away. So I kind of try to have these like in my back pocket ready to go. Okay, so that's an example. You, it's a, it's the empathy, um, attention, and respect. So um, tell me how that you know. I hear you. I want. I I understand. I want to understand more. I had that happen to, or I had that same question happen to. Tell me a little bit about ERA statements, um, empathy, yeah. action, and I love the acronym for ear because it's really about hearing at a different like, level, I yeah. think. So after you've heard what they said is to, you can give a statement that shows empathy and or attention and or respect. So an empathy statement would be, you know, I've, I felt that way too sometimes, or um, I can understand how frustrating this is, or I hear how hard this is for you, or I can see that this isn't the way you wanted things to go. And those all show empathy, because empathy are emotions that we share. Um, it's different from sympathy, where you kind of look down on somebody and say, Boy, you got yourself into a mess. I have sympathy for you. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to do to get out of it, but thanks for <laughs> <Right>. sharing. <laughs> yeah, so that's not a that's not a near statement. That's right, a sympathy statement. But so empathy sentences that start with "I can understand," "I can hear," "I can see," make it like you know, I can do that too. We're both could be on the same wavelength. Then okay. attention would be things like, tell me more, I want to understand, um, I'm listening, go ahead, those kinds of things. And respect, you know, I respect the kind of work you do, um, I respect how hard you work, I respect your commitment to solving this problem, um, those types of things. So it's, it's any of those. Uh, lots of times it's just an empathy statement or just a respect statement and, and things calm down because often under the anger, 
is a more vulnerable feeling. Mm. And if you connect with a more vulnerable feeling, like say, I can understand how that would really make you feel worried or helpless or whatever. Um, so you're you're connecting with them. I like to say it's like like we're forming a team against the problem mm. rather than me against you. Mm. And that's that's the key to it, really, is it's mm. us against the problem. We don't have to be fighting each other. Right, right. So those are what ear statements are, and how are they different than reactive, active listening that people often talk about in counseling, et cetera? Yeah, so active or reflective listening tends to reflect back exactly what you've heard. So I hear that you're angry with me because I was 10 minutes late. Um, and so with ear statements, you'd say, you know, I can understand that would be frustrating and I want to, you know, work with you on this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a connection. We're not just bouncing it back. Mm -hmm. We're really trying to do something mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. with an ear statement rather than, um, you know, just saying this is what you said. And, and where were they, where were the, what's, the, what's the genesis of this? Like, where did this come from? Is it just based on your experiential data of like this diffuses things in core or generally, or how did, how did you come up with them? Or did you just like meditate one day or like, this is a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> No, it actually, it's interesting. It, it happened, I was in a mediation session. Mm -hmm. I was doing a divorce mediation. This is a high-powered couple. Uh, they're both managers in a large organization. And I was doing their divorce mediation. And they, typically, I have three or four sessions, like mm -hmm. two hours each. So they came in to the second or third session and the husband spread out a bunch of financial papers on my round table, leans over, points his finger at my nose, and he oh. says, today, Mr. Eddie, you are going to tell her that I'm going to prevail on this issue. So wow. step up to the plate and do your job. I, th I think this was his management style. <laughs> <laughs> I feel super motivated. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, so now I'm, I'm going to really argue on the behalf of your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really want to work with you now. So, <laughs> so um, my first reaction, I like to say, was my amygdala. And it's that strangle this man. He's right. A <laughs> but I was, I'm a trained mediator, so I didn't yeah. do that. And then I thought, well, I'm going to, point out to him he's not following our ground rules of treating each other with respect. Mm -hmm. But it occurred to me the guy is kind of a narcissist. Yeah. And they don't take negative feedback very well. Mm. So I thought I shouldn't do that. Then I flashed back to when I worked at the psychiatric hospital with people with schizophrenia mm. and I did group therapy with them. And they would, you know, get upset about things. And I, one day early on, I said, someone was upset about the voices were bothering them. And I said, oh, don't worry about those voices. They're not real. That's why you take medication. And the young woman who I said that to <laughs> said, Bill, those voices are real. You don't know what it's like. And the whole group agreed with her. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I probably didn't, the statement didn't seem like it would go over well. Yeah. So I remember my supervisor had said, don't get into logical arguments with people with schizophrenia. Just empathize with their pain. Find out what's going on and empathize with that. So I remembered that and I came back and focused to this guy in front of me with the finger at my nose. And I so I realized that that's empathy. Give them empathy instead of arguments. And so I said, wow, I can see how important this issue is to you. And then I added, and don't worry, we'll take as much time as we need. And I have a lot of respect for your preparation. You obviously did a lot of numbers work here. 
Well, that completely calmed him down. He sat back in his chair and kind of body relaxed. But, you know, we, we still um, had to deal with issues. And so we moved on and he moved on too. Of course, I looked at the wife to see if I need to give her an ear statement also. And she just looked so relieved that I hadn't taken his side, but I also had stopped him. Interesting. So, so, so that was kind of when the light bulb went off and said, hey, um, people who are in conflict are schizophrenic. <laughs> Basically, well, they should be treated like schizophrenic patients because they have many different voices <laughs> coming at them at that same time, which I think when you're angry, you know, there's like the calm, rational CJ, there's the angry, there's a passive aggressive, there are all these yeah. different voices in my head. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah. And it's what, what I realized is that was empathy, attention and respect. Mm. And that, oh, you know, I've got to remember that because that's going to come up again. And I gave a presentation and mentioned empathy, attention, and respect. And a young woman came up to me afterwards and said, I really like the thing about ear. And I said, what thing about ear? She said, empathy, attention, respect. I said, oh, yeah, that's a great concept. And she said, no, as a technique, it is to give them something that includes empathy, attention, or respect. And thus it was born. Wait, so she said it was a technique, it was a technique in the psychological realm, or is it a technique that she just came, she said, like, here's your, here's my marketing TM for you, <laughs> your TM. <laughs> I, think, I think she was just, I'm going to use that. Ah, uh, I'm going to use, herself. I'm taking your stuff and using it. No, yeah, for herself, which for is herself. I want to teach people. And I realized I can teach this as a technique. It's actually mm. a simple technique. And so you told you talked about the divorce couple and when you've actually what what how do you why do you think it calms people down like you said it calms people down it calm people down in the case of this gentleman um and the people that you were coaching at that time or working with is that were you a therapist at that time or just what, what, what was your role i had i had been a therapist for 12 years and then i became a family lawyer that was 2004. So I've been a family lawyer for 11 years. Oh, so wow. Okay, on top okay. of being a therapist for 12 years. So I had all the therapist tools and I was starting to apply them in legal disputes, especially in mediation, because oh. you're dealing with people in front of each other. Um, okay. So I'm sorry, I may, I think in the very beginning, I described you as a judge. So I must have. Um, oh, no, no, not a judge. I must have prejudged you, um, <laughs> so to speak. So apologies. So I do trainings for judges. Uh, maybe so, that's what I got. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's yeah, what I was thinking. but I'm not a judge. <laughs> okay, got it. So, so, um, so tell me a little bit of how, why they calm people down. Well, it seems to be the way the brain works that, and I think a lot about the right and left hemisphere, and it may not be exactly this way, but at least some researchers I've read seem to say it's true. And that is that the, the left hemisphere of the brain is more oriented towards reading and writing, problem solving, objective information. Mm -hmm. And that the right brain is more creative, more intuitive, but it's also more protective. And so you get, um, you know, your angry emotions and stuff there. And if we think about emotions are contagious, if somebody's calming, if you're upset and someone's giving you calming emotions, you're going to start mirroring their calming emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with infants, you know, infants mm -hmm. screaming bloody murder and their parents like, it's okay, Johnny, you're going to eat soon, you know, right. or we're going to go outside or whatever. And the child just calms down because they hear a friendly tone of voice. Mm. So and how, like, and I've, I've noticed two phenomena. One is, um, I want to know when you're going to do blah, blah, blah. And then, and then the husband is like, honey. And this just, and then this goes into, you don't understand me. You know, like, so there's this kind of disconnect where someone is raging and angry, and then someone comes in a calm voice, 
and it's a huge disconnect. It's not building rapport because clearly if you're coming at me at a calm voice, you don't believe me, understand me, or, or feel where I'm coming from. So how do you make that transition from the escalated path of like, you know, down to a calm voice? Because it's not just, it, if you came in, I think, directly and calm when someone is really angry, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't. But what we find with high conflict people is that we, we need to be calm because if we're pushing up some, they're going to just push higher. Interesting. So with, see, it's an interesting theory that psychologists talk about. You match the emotions of the yes. client, and then you calm them down. But what we've learned with high conflict people is if you match, match their high conflict emotions, they just jump up further. Yeah, so I can see that. Come in calm, and then they often... But you've got to be engaged calm, not disengaged calm. Like, oh, okay, you know, I'll look away. you got to be, oh, okay, well, let's look at what we can do. I see. So that it's matching energy levels. So maybe not anger with anger. But how about non-conflict people, like people who aren't high conflict? So I can understand how if maybe perhaps if I was arguing with Donald Trump, like it would be, you know, it would not be good for me to go like, Donald, you know. <laughs> He'd be like, mm, you know, I can see how he would like inflate more. It's like two balloons inflating. <laughs> but how about for our non hot high conflict people? Because um, you said some psychologists talk about matching and then com coming down. Um, do you think that which is a better approach in terms of calming things down? I, I think simply being calm. And being okay. engaged, so you're you're calm and you're engaged, and that's for everybody. Yeah. So, so if the person comes like, Bill, how many times do I have to tell you about the garbage? <laughs> okay, so I'm just pretending. I know your wife probably doesn't do that, but let's... I already took it out. No, <laughs> ten minutes before, ten minutes before this, I took it out, so I'm covered. I'm good. For <laughs> but uh, your wife is kind of coming out it's like how many times do i have to tell you that you actually have to take out the garbage you know so i'm kind of having like a rage and you're not a high conflict person so like i can see you going honey totally get it i totally understand i hear you honey like i can see how that energy could be matched and be but that's not calm like how would you match me in that scenario or how, how would you deal with me in that scenario yeah, um, you know, I got it. I'm going to take it out. It'll be a few minutes from now. But I hear you. You know, that's okay. I understand. It's frustrating. I didn't get around to it yesterday when I thought I would. So yeah. I'll, I'll get to it now. Okay. Or something yeah. like that. So I hear you. Is the but why do I always have to have the same conversation with you? Um, well, I'll have to think about that. I have to pay some attention to that. Okay. See, it's getting hard to argue with me. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's hard to argue with you. <laughs> it is hard to argue with you. That works. It's funny because I'm going to, I, it's funny because my husband and I, you know, we've been working at this for a while. We've been married for 25 years. And um, he said, you know, you kind of made a mess in the, um, in the sink yesterday. And I like, I, you need to clean this up more and he's actually a very gentle guy but i could but to him that's angry like i doesn't sound angry but that for him that's like a little bit pissed off and i said you're right the sink is really um a mess i agree and i'll do a better job cleaning at it sorry and then the whole thing left <laughs> stop and he said wow that worked <laughs> and he uh -huh. left the kitchen <laughs> I think it's just like a message received, acknowledge, I will work on it. You're right. Goodbye. <laughs> I just See, ended the whole thing. See, that's the thing. People escalate to anger when they can't just say, look, I have this problem or I have this vulnerable emotion. And so they get into anger and attack you. When And so your ear statement can get under and relate to what's mm. upsetting to them. Mm -hmm. So you're not reflecting anger back, you're, you're connecting with the vulnerable feelings underneath. Mm. And uh, so how would you, how would you do a little jujitsu and 
have it turn on yourself. Like, how could you actually use these statements for yourself or you're like, CJ, you it's okay. Give yourself air statements. That's the last chapter, I think. Yeah. Book. And the idea is, especially if you're going into a tough situation, like I've done a lot of high conflict mediations where people get angry at each other and then they get angry at me because I'm nearby. Right. And so I tell myself, Bill, you know, it's not about you. Um, you're not responsible for their outcome. Mm. Um, you can handle this. Um, you know, it's their problem, not mine. Mm. I, so yeah, it's hard not to inherit that stuff, right? Like, what could I have done differently when I'm facilitating this? What should I have done differently? How? And, and how much, this is a question that for mediation, I think, is um, what I'm noticing nowadays, particularly with highly, we were saying before the show that people are highly agitated, right? So they're more prone to ag agitation conflict. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I had this workshop that I was giving for people who were very just like, I've had it. I've had it with this management, you know, that kind of like, I've had it with this management. I don't know how many times we've said this and it just is, go falls on deaf ears, you know? And then, and then it was this kind of like escalation of like, yeah, and another thing, but, and, and you know, um, I was wearing two hats and I wasn't really sure how to manage it. So I would love your advice on this. So, you know, on the one hand, if, if I was there, my client, I would like listen to them all the way to the end, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, there's generally a story behind the story. And, and once I hear the full story, I can hear the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. But when it's a group of people and they're all chiming in and then it's like, you can see the like wheels, you know, and that's like taking off in some direction. <laughs> yeah, it has this thing. So yep. how do you allow and be empathetic and hear, but not have some the trains go off the track? Yeah, well, you can do a simple ear statement and it doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be long-winded, and you can actually interrupt somebody and give them an ear statement. Say, wow, I hear how frustrated you are. Now, how I can help you today is to focus on this next task. And mm, so okay, good. you can interrupt it. And high conflict people to spend a lot of time talking and venting and blaming. And you can just give an ear statement at any time during a statement like that. Okay, I'm going to pretend to be this so we can role model how this looks. Okay. Oh, wait, so my boss, I, my boss just does not listen to me and I just cannot stand her. And like the other day she said to me, um, you know, CJ, you know, you need to actually do this report better. And I did do the report better. I do it every single time better. And I just can't understand. And then she did this other thing. And uh, okay, so you didn't well, stop sounds, me. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds so hard. I mean, you it, it is Bill, because the day. thing that you don't understand is that she does this all the time. I can't yeah. take it anymore. Oh, I know situations like that. That's so frustrating. And so I feel for you. It's, it's not. But how am I going to make her stop? Over. Okay. So there's this, I'm, I'm only demonstrating the over talking, right? It's like, I'm not even allowing you to talk. Yeah. How do you, how do you deal with those situations? I, I, I outlast them. <laughs> 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 I'll keep giving some more ear statement and they'll be like, well, but, but, and I'll go, yeah, you can deal with this. You probably don't realize it yet, but this, this is going to pass too. And so you can handle this and let's talk about uh, what you're going to do tomorrow. What are you going to have for breakfast? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you get them back into their body. Like you get them back into the present moment. Cause I'm kind of going into the past and creating these like, seven different lanes that I could be going in and wanting right. to talk about lane one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know? Yeah. So you stop them from going into like lane one, lane two, you're like, okay, get the general gist. So stop at lane oh. two. I understand you. Yeah. And once they feel like you're connecting with them, they don't have to be escalated like that. Oh. Like I've had people say, good, Bill, you get it. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. You get it. And then I'll say, let's look at our choices now. What do we do? What's the next step here? Mm. So that 
you know, they, they feel empathized with, respected, attended to, and, and they don't have to be angry anymore. We usually, within about 30 seconds of an ear statement, people are calmer. Mm. So it's, it's most of the time it really works. And it's kind of surprising, but people want to be empathized with. Yeah. They want people to respect them. So in the, in the case of the person, see, and I, this is my part as an Asian person, I really am taught not to interrupt. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so show me how, so I, I didn't know what you did because I was too busy role playing. So what did you do in that case to stop me and interject? And how did you get me? And then I kept on trying to rattle on because this is what people do. Yeah. How did you, I how did you outlast I, me? I said something about, oh, that can be so hard and. Yeah, and I didn't even hear it because I went into my own world, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, I, I don't remember exactly, but something about empathizing, or I've been there too, you know, and that's so hard. And mm -hmm. You have to deal with that every day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so, so that's a few ear statements strung together. Yeah, yeah. So it's different than like active listening would be, um, this would be how I would do it as an active listener, like, wow, it sounds like you're having, you had three different issues, you're the boss, this, this, and this, and it sounds like um, I'm, I'm getting a sense that you're, you're sounding kind of frustrated and irritated. Yes, yeah. I am. You know, so it's, yeah. so do you, do you say not to do reflective, like, which do you think is more effective, effective, depending well, on? Well, I think with, with high conflict people, you can be reflective, but you need to give a little something too. Like, you know, right. I can really empathize with that. It's like what I hear you saying is duh, 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 and I, I can really empathize with that. I've mm -hmm. been in situations like that too, and it's just really frustrating. Right. So you're giving a little bit of yourself. So you're right. connecting with them. I like to think of it as a connection. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you I know, think that just that's just bouncing really... it back to them. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, you know, that's what you're uh, feeling. Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, please go <laughs> away now because <laughs> I don't want to deal with you anymore. Yeah. And whatever yeah. this is. So this is like, hey, let's work on this together. Yeah. Like, I get it. Let's figure out how. Like, it's kind of like I'm hearing the energy that you bring is kind of, well, I get it. God, how would we work on this? It has this kind of we. How would we work on this? How? Let's, you know, I'm wondering, I'm curious. A sense of we, a sense yeah. of us against the problem, not yes. against you. Yeah. That's the key. That's really what it's about. Yeah, because it's hard not to take, I think really when it comes right down to it, it's hard not to take any of these statements. It's hard. It's easy to take things personally. Yes. But it's about me. And you're saying I'm not good or you don't like me or I'm bad. Or this is, I'm not really saying what people really say. They say some other things, but essentially it boils down to those things. Yeah. Yep. yeah so it's basically depersonalize it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, we've, um, any other things to share? About well, I just book? wanted to mention once, um, my wife and I were at a hotel in another country and they lost our reservation or something. And, you know, we don't know the language, it's a strange place, we're tired, we got off the plane and all of that. And the hotel clerk woman says, I'll work with you on this. And as soon as she said that, it's like, oh, good. Yeah. We're going to solve this. We didn't solve it yet, but she's going to work with us on this. Mm. And it was just like a perfect ear statement. It's just, yeah. you know, I'm with you, not against you. Yeah, I think that that's the summation of it, right? It's to sh demonstrate I'm with you and not against you. I'm not only with you, we are going to do this together, and I'm going to hold your hand throughout this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you can do that with almost anybody, and you can do it briefly. You don't yeah. have to take on their life, you know, and fix them. But you can have empathy in the moment. Yeah, because when that happens, that right brain kind of calms down. And then it can exactly. kind of move, be more logical or rational or get to the left part of the brain that's like, okay, let's actually just focus on the facts. Yeah. So it's just calming the whole system down by, I see you, I hear you. It's like a little, 
it's like the two-year-old having a tantrum i hear you honey it's very okay. much yeah yeah i like it and and that's sometimes high conflict people are like having a tantrum and, yeah and it's like sometimes people think well i'm just not going to say anything or i'm just going to walk away but a near statement calms the situation and walking away may escalate it oh interesting so walking away see i think actually walking away is the kindest thing but you're saying that could escalate things it, with a high conflict person um they really want to engage at an intense level and so if you just walk away they're going to come after you maybe grab you and shake you and i think just giving them an ear statement is like oh okay you acknowledge me now i don't have to fight with you anymore mm -hmm. interesting like yeah yeah it's hard i always thought that walking away and not causing conflict was a higher path but maybe it's not. Well, it, it depends on who it is. With a lot of reasonable people, they'll go, okay, we're taking a break. But if you say something and then take your break, you may really make it not so upsetting. You might say, look, you know, let's just disagree. Let's agree to disagree on this. Mm -hmm. and do that in a pleasant tone of voice and then go on your way. Yeah. That's that's going to calm things more than not doing that and just walking away. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. And well, I mean, OK, can I I know we're running out of time. Can I ask you one other question? We sure. <clears throat> I was walking along the street with my husband mm -hmm. and um, some woman came up to us. I think I may have mentioned this to you before, but I, I, um, I'm trying to figure out what ear statements, because I, I, I'm, I've played this over and over in my mind, and I still don't know really what the right, I don't even know if there is yeah. the right thing. But this woman came up to um, my husband and me, and she said, um, why are you with her when you could be with someone like me? Um, and meaning oh, like, why goodness. are you with her because she's um, a person of color oh. when you could be like me, a blonde haired woman? <clears throat> so I and I I was actually in shock because you don't really see hear yeah. those kinds of things in Seattle very often. Mm. It's a pretty liberal place. Yeah. And I wanted to go in and like, well, I'm just curious. How is it that you know? I I wanted to kind of I I'm I, I'm probably not going to say I felt that way too, or I can <laughs> understand. <laughs> I'm not going to say. You know, I respect and I respect you. I'm not going to say any of those things. I may see, say like, okay, I don't even know if I'd say I'm listening and go on um, or tell me more. Like, I don't, how do, how do you respond to someone and something like that? Um, and my husband just went after her. He just said, what makes you say? And then he's just like, why do you say? And then he was going to run on to, onto the bus that she was waiting for and take a picture <laughs> and then post it on Facebook. So he understood, like, we actually have a recording of her and her hateful spewing um, because he wanted to, like, post it and shame her. And it was really because and, and the question was, what is the right thing to do? Because in a lot of ways, if people feel there's no that they can just wail out hateful speech, then and with no repercussions, then they will continue. Um, but at the same time, I was like, I don't want conflict. You know, you clearly, if you're yelling, saying these things to random people on the street, you're not well, and I just want to leave you. So this, I, I don't, I don't know what, 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 what are your thoughts on this and ear well, statements? What could have happened? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to picture them saying that and, and my how I would empathize with that. I mean, the, the, temptation, the temptation. You're right, I feel sad for you. <laughs> I don't yeah. get it, I don't feel that's legit. No, no, I mean, I, it sounds, I mean, I think of sarcastic ear statements. <laughs> <laughs> what would your sarcastic ear statement be? Oh, sounds sounds like you're worried about getting dates. Um, is there uh, <laughs> any tips that I can give you? Uh, <laughs> see, what's under the anger? There's usually something vulnerable. So yeah. somebody that's having a hard time getting dates and they see, well, you got one. Yeah. So, 
I'm blonde. Why shouldn't I have one? Yeah. <laughs> but that's sarcastic. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I, Mike, I, I still am not sure what the right thing to do was, is to just either walk away because what productive you know, thing could here's, happen. Here's what's coming to mind. Because I also believe in setting limits. Um, yeah. Using air statements to set limits and say, mm. You know, I, I respect your right to have your opinion, but you need to know that that's really insulting mm -hmm. and that you'll probably be happier if you don't say things like that in front of people like me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to start slapping you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, you'd, you'd be sa safer because I'm going to now hit you with this magazine. <laughs> Right. But so, but I don't need, I, I don't know if she, she would have been like well I don't I mean she was angry she was like a a bee you know like a bee you know kind of like you hit the hornet's nest and like, so I don't know if that would have worked but I guess I mean do I respect her well, right I, to have well, an opinion the other, the other alternative is to say wow you know you're really upset about this you know I, I'd like to understand I've always you know kind of wondered what's what's so upsetting in this you know we're just human beings can you tell me more what what's what's upsetting to you what's what's going yeah that on? would have been the most compassionate way of dealing Probably with it the better way I, I was trying to go in that direction but after my husband was kind of like you know he was kind of setting boundaries like yeah. it's not cool to do this and what makes you give you what gives you the right to even think that this is an okay behavior because it, it is kind of when certain behavior is condoned in, in which it is right now in in the in society on tv uh -huh. everything you see certain like very i would in my opinion humble opinion it's bad behavior being right. on on tv by our you know our authority figures and so when you see that it's his point of view like you need to stop it so it doesn't happen and so yeah. i do think that there is a boundary setting um which i think would be like you should not be talking about this you have no idea what would happen to you and i think yeah. you you know what i mean like he's saying this to my husband she's saying this to my husband so like he could like, have like wailed off on her i mean he she doesn't know if he's he's actually a gentle person but i mean i don't know well i think you know i mean the, I do believe in setting boundaries and that that's something that needs that. What, I, what I've learned about setting boundaries, give people an ear statement and then set the boundary. Yeah. And so yeah, that's a good I idea. work with psychiatric patients, mm. often my best ear statements are when I picture the other person as a psychiatric patient. patient. Mm. And I've done this even when I've been dealing with opposing lawyers mm. in a case. Since I'm a family mm. lawyer, I got other sometimes jerks to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I just picture them as a psychiatric, as a naked <laughs> psychiatric patient. I think I saw this episode on the Brady Bunch <laughs> when I was little. But yeah, you imagine that someone is a psychiatric patient and then you would say like, you know, they don't. Yeah, so you may you may not understand this, but that's really inappropriate, and and you really need to watch out because somebody's probably going to punch you in the face if you say that mm -hmm. around them, and we're not going to do that, but we want to save you a lot of stress. So that would have worked perfectly. That would have been like you probably don't realize this, but what you said was incredibly offensive. We're pretty peaceful, so we're just going to walk away. But understand, one day someone may punch you in the face or get mad at, or hurt you. Yeah. Um, this is not a place where you can just go willy nilly and throw these statements. So be careful next time. That's my yeah. warning to you. Right? Yeah, I think that that would have that would have worked, and I would have felt like both needs were met. Where I yeah. finally feel resolved. I've, I've been thinking about this for a really long time and I still have not come up with the answer, but that for yeah. me, at least personally, that feels like the right answer where it's not like, a you know, being a pushover or going into denial, but then also being somewhat kind, right? It's like just for your own safety yeah. and well-being, you probably ought to not say things like that in the future because who you have no idea if I'm carrying a weapon, if I'm a yeah. karate expert, because I'm Chinese, you know, like <laughs> I, it might be Bruce Lee next. Watch out. 
<laughs> you're lucky I don't know Kung Fu, but it could be Bruce Lee and you'd be on the ground, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, I love it. Thank you so much. You finally answered a quandary and many more. Thank you so much. We've had Bill Eddy talking about his book, Calming Upset People with Ear. Thank you so much and happy holidays. Thank you so much.